My name is Selma de Mink. I am an astrophysicist at the University of Amsterdam. I'd like to tell you today about the most massive stars in the universe. This is probably not something you think about every day, but as I will argue, these massive stars have been incredibly important in our own cosmic history. You can see some of these massive stars in the image. It is a picture we took with one of the cameras on board the Hubble Space Telescope. In red and yellow, you see clouds of gas. In blue, at the top, you see some of the most massive stars we know. You see many of them in this picture, but in fact, they're very rare. Uh, we see many just because they're so bright. In fact, we just learned that some of these stars are 100 times more massive than the Sun. So let's compare them to the Sun. The most common stars in the universe are low mass. They're similar to the Sun, or even less massive, and they're much cooler. And because they're cooler, they appear red, and so we call them red or even brown dwarfs. I'm talking about hot blue stars. They are at least eight times more massive than the Sun, and they can be up to a million times brighter. Stars like these live very different lives than our own Sun. They explode at the end of their lives as supernova leaving behind beautiful remnants, as you see here. Stars like these played an enormously big role in the history of our universe. Here, I show you a schematic timeline of how our universe evolved and expanded over time. Shortly after the Big Bang, the universe was dark. There were no sources of light, apart from the gradually dimming background radiation. This period is known as the Cosmic Dark Ages. After about 100 million years, the first stars appeared. We think these stars were all very massive. Very quickly, they gave rise to the first supernova explosions. Over time, generations of massive stars kept forming, living short lives and exploding, forming new stars over and over and over. And during their lives, they used their hot radiation to heat and ionize the surrounding gas. They have very strong winds and they blow bubbles and holes in the surrounding gas. Over time, they completely transform the galaxies that they are part of, eventually shaping the universe to the diverse universe in which our own solar system formed. One of the reasons our universe is so interesting today is because of the diversity of elements. Here I'm showing you the periodic table of elements. Maybe you remember this from your high school chemistry book. This is not just a scientific diagram. These are the elements we actually are made of, and you can recognize many of them. For example, oxygen, that is the oxygen we are breathing right now, but also carbon. Carbon is the main building block for all organic molecules that we know, and all the uh, elements that our own body out is made out of, the tissue, our muscles, and then there's calcium, which is in our teeth and our bones, and iron, which is in our blood. However, the only elements that were made in the Big Bang and that existed in the early days of the universe were just hydrogen and helium and a little bit of lithium. Have you ever wondered where all the other elements came from? We think these elements were made deep inside stars. It all starts with the force of gravity. Because of gravity, a gas cloud slowly collapses and it starts to collapse under its own weight, forming fragments and these fragments form small filaments. The filaments contract further, eventually becoming hot balls of gas. We can see this better if we zoom in. You can see several stars are forming together, forming a small star cluster. These stars keep contracting and heating up until the central temperatures exceed a few million degrees. This is so extremely hot that nuclear fusion becomes possible. Hydrogen particles deep inside the star collide with each other and they fuse together after a series of collisions to form helium. And it doesn't stop there. If the star runs out of fuel, if it runs out of hydrogen in this very center, it will contract further so that it becomes hotter so that helium can be fused into the next elements, namely carbon and oxygen. This is where it ends for stars like our sun. But for massive stars, this is only the beginning they will contract further, reaching ever, ever higher temperatures, making more and more elements. Massive stars can fuse hydrogen all the way up to iron. 
At the end of their lives, their deep interior looks like a set of onion shells with different layers of all the elements that they produce during their life. Finally, the star explodes. This explosion is so powerful that even more elements are made. And some of these elements will be ejected into the surrounding gas clouds. And out of these gas clouds, new stars are being formed. Over and over, generation after generation. And this is, think, this is how we think that elements are made and eventually incorporated into solar systems and planets like our own. Quite incredible, isn't it? The oxygen you are breathing right now was once made inside a supernova explosion. So, does this solve all the puzzles? No, we keep learning every day about the universe, finding more crazy stars. Obviously, it only gets more complicated and a lot more fascinating. Uh, these are many of the questions that we're trying to understand as uh, astronomers and astrophysicists. I'm especially interested what happens when stars are not alone, but when they come in pairs, so-called binary systems. Having a binary companion can affect the life of a star dramatically. It will affect how they explode and what elements they make during their lives. We still don't understand exactly how this works, but we do know massive stars often come in pairs. Anyway, many questions we are still trying to figure out. But there's one thing we are certain of, and I could not say it any better than Carl Sagan once did. You are made of star stuff. <laughs>